for our day and time. He loves his Bible, and he knows his Bible better than you or me. He's got all those verses memorized by heart. But he reads his Bible through a certain kinds of lens. The lens of the character and nature of a God who is loving and kind. Therefore, he says, I will not harm her, abuse her, expose her, shame her, ridicule her, or demean her value, her dignity, or her worth. I will protect Mary. Where does it say that, Joseph? Can you quote the scripture verse where it says to do that, Joseph? He shakes his head no. But he says he finds it in the very nature and character of the God he worships. Joseph, who we think it's so easy to be, is the first person in the New Testament who learned how to read a Bible. Like Joseph, we are to read it through the spectacles of the grace and goodness and love of God. If in the Bible you find justification for abusing, humiliating, disgracing, harming, or hurting, especially when it makes you feel better about yourself, then you're absolutely wrong. At least that's what I believe. The Bible is to be read in light of the character of God. The character of God that we find in the person of Jesus Christ, the primary revelation of God. And the God of Joseph. That God. The God revealed in Jesus Christ chooses to be a God born for us. Given for us. To live and die for us. That God is a God of love and grace and compassion. Even God's judgment leads to God's love. There are those Christians who read the Bible differently. And we can all say, when we say this love, we all have one God and are all one. But I'll be honest, sometimes I can't see the God I worship in the God they profess. A God who doesn't love unconditionally. A God who they can justify cruelty to. A God that justifies them planting a bomb because they don't like something. A God to justify killing this person or that person because they did what was evil in their sight. I just don't see the God of Jesus Christ that I worship here on Sunday mornings in that God. Do you? If Joseph would have followed scriptures plain and simple, where would we be today? Mary would have been dead early on. But he read his Bible differently. He trusted in a dream. He trusted in the character and nature of God he had learned about. The God that freed his people from Egypt when they were slaves. The God who rescued them from captivity. The God that again and again, even when the Israelites didn't deserve it, didn't help themselves, still sent help every time. And rescued them. He knew the history of salvation. That though his people didn't deserve it. Though they went off and wrong over and over again. Still God was faithful to them. That's what God remembers. That's what Joseph remembers about God. And that's how he reads his scripture. With those memories. About the acts of God. It's not so easy. To be you, Joseph. You're more than a donkey transporter, more than a backdrop or a space filler, more than just a guide to get married to Bethlehem. You're a man in your own right, one who does what is right and teaches us the right way to read Scripture. Because it isn't so easy to know the right choice most of the time. Life is not always clearly black and white, good and evil, right and wrong. It rarely is. But Joseph took his stand. Took his stand for the nature of the God he worshipped. Took his stand behind a God of love and mercy. Took his stand next to Mary and held her hand for all to see. Despite the words, despite the rumors, despite their little whispers behind his back. He took his stand there. Because of the God he worshipped. Where will you stand this Christmas? Will you stand behind a God of love, forgiveness, and open arms? Will you stand next to the oppressed, the judged, the cast out, the misunderstood, the people standing here with signs who who knows why they're out there? We often use the phrase, well, for no fault of their own. 
Is anything done with no fault of our own? Maybe, we're, maybe they should have had a different major in college. Maybe they should have gone after a different job. Where would you stand this Christmas? What kind of God do you stand behind? That's the question. The question is, who is your God? Because you can read this scripture, and people come up with all sorts of reasons and all sorts of descriptions of God, and so you can come up with very different ways to act based on this book. The question you have to answer is, who is your God? The God you worship, what's that God like? Who is your God? What is the character and nature of your God? And how do you know what is right? That's the question for this Christmas. Because it's going to come up, I guarantee it. You're going to have choices to make. And you're going to have to ask yourself, what is the right thing to do here? And at some point, you're going to have to know, how do you know what is right, what is wrong? How do you make those choices? How do you read the scripture? What is the character and nature of the God you worship? What is the right thing? Let us pray.